United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk call the roll? Okay, roll call. Hughes. Here. Paquette. Here. Atwood. Here. Smith. Here. Wilkers. Here. And Chair Jaffa. And note that we have a full board. Uh, citizen comments, except for those items scheduled for public hearing, we have no public hearing, so if there's any comments from the public. Uh, no one is signed in. Uh, there is someone in the audience that would like to speak. Thank you for the opportunity. Would you speak? Yeah, there you go. And in town, if that matters, with you guys. Uh, I just came here to got a, a couple projects I'd love to have you guys work on. The first one is uh, our new public works building. I would love to see that be built right. Just give me one, and then we're good to go. But until we actually force our designers to give us a building that's going to be appropriate for the next 50 years, we're going to end up with the same stuff they've been selling for the last 30 years. So I really implore upon PACAP, which I think is going to be a, is a great tool, to encourage our engineering folks to just give us something that we know will work for a long time. I mean, I know we can build a super insulated building. I know we could heat it with a few candles if we wanted to. I also know that that engineering firm could have put $100,000 worth of controls on that building to manage two candles. And I think what we learned from the library, which was a, a painful process for me, was unless you tell them no, give us something simpler, and if it's insulation, all the better, right? Because we know we don't have to do much with insulation. So that was my first task, is I hope you guys can get more involved in the design process, because we're still at the beginning. The next meeting, they'll be at their 70, 90 percent, and it's done. We're stuck with it, whatever they give us for the next 50 years. Uh, my, my other deal was, you know, most some of you know at least, I've been involved in heat pumps. And I don't care what flavor they are, I just think the technology is where we got to go. We got to stop burning oil, we got to address climate change, at least individually, hopefully as a community. And so I've been promoting heat pumps for you know, the last six, eight years. Um, what we have coming up for us is going to be incredible that Inflation Reduction Act that Congress passed last year. It's going to be handing out rebates probably late this year. AHFC will be administering that, as I understand. And for low-income folks, they get up to an $8,000 essentially instant rebate on a heat pump. And currently, a small little mini spits about I don't know five grand or something to put in, so they're they're actually going to be eligible for something better than what we've been putting in. The model middle income from 80% of that average household income from our deal to 150% is going to get 50% off, up to $4,000 off the heat pump. So I think we need to be ready for that because it's a limited amount of money. And we have to be able to get folks to get out there and, and take advantage of the programs. So I guess I'm just here to answer questions got a lot of information. I'm happy to put together a presentation and we can get into the real nuts and bolts and details of heat pumps if you want. If you want to become experts, you can join our little club. Um, with that, unless you have any questions, I just wanted to bring up those two little projects. We, we can't really get into a question and answer, okay. Phil, uh, but I, I think that we do. I would agree that we probably need to schedule something. I'm around. Yep. Let's, and let's and certainly the commissioners are welcome to to uh, respond. If you stick around for the meeting and want a closing comments, the commissioners can respond. Sure. Okay. okay. Thank you.
Okay, and anybody else? Okay, so uh, we'll move to the approval of the agenda and the consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Chair Goffin, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda. And a second? And a second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, discussion? Um, I would just like to suggest that under other new business items that we move item number three to uh, be the first thing that we discuss. I just am worried that we might run out of time and and that discussion is related to the ordinance and the piece that's going to council. So I just feel like... Um, Vice Chair, if I may? Yeah. On the agenda, the discussion of the utility infrastructure is actually supposed to be a presentation. Okay. So I don't want to hold up very quick, uh, Patrick, but that's going to be a PowerPoint on the TV. Oh, okay. It was misplaced, uh, perhaps, in the agenda. Okay. So that should be under item D, is what you're saying? It should really be under presentations? Uh, correct. Okay. Okay. So with that, uh, with that change, um, how do we do that? Do we need to actually amend this agenda because it's written this way? Uh, yeah, do you want to restructure it on the spot and then if there's no objection, we could approve it? Yes. Is, that, is there any objection to that? We're just reordering it. And then beyond that, uh, the discussion about the attorney under other new business. Uh, did you want uh, to make a... Is that your comment? Uh, that's my motion would be to to change it to be the first item in whatever the list is and you're making a motion is there a second i'll second okay uh discussion so let's uh we, we're reordering the agenda structurally without a motion correct Correct. So just for clarification, the utility infrastructure is going first under presentation, and then the attorney's notes uh, that's, is second? That's a motion. There's a motion to do that. And then the Smith plan would be third? Correct. Okay. So the, the, uh, the can the clerk read the motion? So the motion would be to reorder the agenda. Uh, utility infrastructure goes first under presentation, second, and then under new business items, uh, discuss attorney's notes would come first, and then second would be the SMIC discussion. Okay. Call for a vote. Okay. Voting on the approval of the agenda and consent agenda as it's been uh, restructured. Walkers? Yes. Atwood? Yes. Okay? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Smith? Yes. And Chair Jocko? Yes. Okay, your agenda and consent agenda have been approved, and there are no items on the consent agenda. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Special Order Proclamations, none. The Administration Report, please. Tony, you want to go first? I do not. No, you don't have anything to add? I don't have anything to All right. Uh, a couple things for the board. Um, first, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Um, Tony, myself, and the mayor are going to be meeting with the um, Navy commander, um, his chief of staff, and some of their other representatives on April 15th and Norm's going to be in Washington DC for the annual uh, legis legislative visit um, so we'll have somebody from administration will probably end up being Shannon here um, for the work session on April 19th but I'll just apologize in advance that Tony and myself and Norm will not be here for that date um, that work session is to talk about the legislative priorities um, and I guess administration's thought would be that after the work session, then we would 
we would craft a resolution for the board to approve at your subsequent regular meeting providing City Council with the board's recommendations for the legislative priorities and so my ask for the board would be that um, it's really unfortunate I, I really wish I could be here for that meeting because you're going to have questions for for us about those projects and which projects you want on there and so I don't know if you want to reschedule it or if you want to reach out and maybe we could set up a time and I could talk to each of you guys about any thoughts you might have but um, let's let manager okay and then um, I'm gonna be out of town on vacation from May 1st and May 8th and so I'll apologize again for missing that meeting I'll be in Yakutat fulfilling one of my bucket lists and fishing the Sitak so Steelhead? Steelhead. So, um, yeah. Um, and then the third thing, so on page five, um, the clerk um, provided just an email reminder um, that um, a, the kind of the quarterly update um, is coming up. Um, and I was hoping that the board could talk about how and when um, you wanted to get on to a council meeting agenda to provide council an update on what the board's been up to. Um, and that's all I have, and I'll take any questions that you might have. Okay. I, I just wonder if it makes sense to have that work session without all those staff members available. Yeah. And if we shouldn't reschedule it. Especially if you're not going to be here for the next meeting as well. Right. I feel like we need that guidance. So Norm will be gone. I believe from the 17th through the 21st um, of April or May. Or excuse me, of April. So I don't know if we could do that work session on the 26th. Uh, I uh, my schedule would allow us to uh, move it from the 19th to the 26th. Or anybody else. Mine works. I can move mine. I can move it too. Wayne, then. Um, hold on, just a moment. Uh, yes, affirmative. I can be there. I can do that. Okay, so if we if we move the 419 meeting. From that date till the 26th, then we would be able to have attendance of the, the people. That makes sense to me. Do we need to, to motion that, or uh, you don't have to? There's no objection from the board. Yeah. However, you're welcome to call for a vote if you want. I don't think it's needed. I think we polled everybody. And I would still offer if if board members had questions about anything sure. um, we'll put the legislative priorities guide in the packet and after this meeting I'll probably email you a copy so you can start looking at it there's a lot in there so if you do have questions about any of the projects or anything that's like on the CIP list but not in the guide please call me I mean there's there's gonna be a lot to that so if you do want to talk about it before the work session feel free to give me a call and chat about it Carl. Yeah, uh, you made an interesting comment aside from the report. What's going on with the Navy? <laughs> I don't really know. So they, their um, chief of staff reached out to um, our admin, Shannon Thorne, and said, hey, I'd like a meeting with um, either the city manager, the assistant, and harbor master. And, well, well harbor, and this is the date, and we just kind of on a tour of the facilities. They didn't really give us anything specific. I'll let you, I'll let the board know what this visit entails. Oh, we got some room they can move here too. <laughs> so I, the, I'm not gonna say they're being secretive, but they haven't really given us a topic. It's just, we wanna come to Seward and tour your facilities and. Okay. Yeah. If I might, were you here when the Navy was here last time? I was not. Yeah. They even brought their band. Oh, yeah. Oh, their court, uh, brass quartet or quintet, it was great. But uh, don't forget to take them to the airport and tell them that that long runway is suitable for a C-130. Roger that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what other, uh, with Norm gone, uh, 
Do we have a harbor report? Um, it's mostly just seasonal stuff, stuff, stuff starting to pick up for sure within the harbor and the port. We're seeing a lot of activity. Um, and really nothing new on that front. Um, SMIC is definitely getting busy. Do you guys have any questions from? Yeah, I have one question. Sure. Uh, the report said that uh, be careful, it's winter. Do you have an update on that? <laughs> <laughs> Until June 1. <laughs> okay. Well, it better be May 1, because that's when we have to take our studs off. <laughs> okay. If there's not, no other administration report, can, yeah, we, can we talk about that quarterly report? And sure. Yeah, let's do that. Right. So I think uh, I, I have given those quarterly reports in the past when I've been both uh, chair and vice chair. Uh, it, 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 it's not uh, it, it's not tremendously difficult. Uh, I think I actually follow the Laura Snyder approach. She did a very uh, good presentation, written and, and then spoke before council. Uh, I think I think the PACAP board. Uh, uh, they've done a pretty good job as far as uh, our meeting schedules, and I definitely report on our attendance in lieu of, of all the other boards that have some attendance issues. I think uh, our application, our, our uh, dedication to look at uh, a lot of the things that are on our priority list, I think we could just take a look at that and, and see what we've accomplished. Uh, do you have some thoughts? I, would, I think that's great. I was just more hoping that we can pick a date. Um, so we could get it on the agenda. So, what's the opportunity? May eight or May twenty second, maybe. If you waited till the twenty second, then you, that would be right before hiatus and after your meeting with the heat loop ad hoc committee. And so maybe that maybe that second May meeting would be good. We're going to be at the April. Uh, we're going to be at the last uh, council meeting, right? The twenty fourth. So the ordinance, the 2.30, will be introduced. Um, I think the version in the packet had it being introduced on April 10 and enacted at the second April meeting. We're going to push that back one meeting so that the body can look at the comments from the attorney. Right. So it would be introduced on April 24th and enacted on May 8th. So you'll be in attendance on that May 8th meeting anyway. Okay, and you're saying we don't need to be in attendance at the April 24th meeting now? I, I think the, the board just needs to decide which meeting you want to provide the quarterly report at. So if you wanted, I guess the advantage of, being, of doing May 8th is the board's already going to be there to talk about the ordinance, the okay. 2.30 ordinance. Okay. The advantage of doing May 22nd for your quarterly report is that that's after your your calendar is complete for before you go on hiatus. Um, the May 17th work session, um, that joint work session with the Heat Loop Ad Hoc Committee, um, and then and that's one of the items you could talk about then with council. So I guess there's pros and cons to doing the quarterly report on the 8th or the 22nd. Thoughts. I personally would prefer to do the May 8th. It's a little preliminary to the, the last meetings, but it also gives time in the year to act on anything that, that came up uh, from the council. If the uh, council uh, heard a quarterly report, said we'd like you to focus a little bit more on that, we'd still have a little bit of opportunity. Uh, it, it, uh, Doing it at the end is a wrap-up, I'm not entirely sure. Our minutes uh, are available to consult. Uh, they, they can certainly take an opportunity to see what we're doing. But that would be my preference is May 8th. And it's not a huge activity so that the, the, with what else we're doing, it, it's not going to extend the meeting. Is there other opinions, comments? I have no objection. The 8th, good for me. So let's go May 8th for the quarterly report, if that's uh, without objection. Okay. Does that complete uh, what admin needs? Okay, we're good. Okay, so... Oh. Mm -mm. 
Reports, so Alaska Railroad report. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so that you have the report here in writing. Um, some of the things that have been going on, we're uh, moving out uh, the last of uh, uh, 7,000 plus tons of uh, Spinard Builder Supply materials that, uh, that have uh, come in. We'll have a train push here over the next two days, Thursday and Friday, to get that out. So we've been uh, busy with train activity, we've got um, tenants on the property, Catalyst Marine, for example, they're working on a, on a barge dock side uh, today as we speak. We'll see um, if they can get that wrapped up. Uh, wintering barge activity, um, again, uh, cruise ship season. Uh, we're still tentatively um, uh, looking at 90 ships this coming season. Um, in other news, the uh, dock improvement project, the cruise dock improvement project, has essentially been put on a strategic uh, 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 hold, and um, so I've, uh, I've got a little bit of information included there. These conversations, of course, are, are taking place at um, high, higher levels, um, but uh, I, uh, I learned that I will have normal operations uh, through the coming cruise season and then that will be extended through the 24 cruise season with it appears a uh, project beginning in earnest at the at the close of the 24 cruise ship season um, and having said that uh, we're also um, having more conversations about the planned freight dock expansion and in fact I just uh, departed a meeting early because the discussions are related to what we can and can't do because of inflationary pressures. Um, so we're, we're perhaps making some design changes. Um, the, the current cruise dock expansion plan um, uh, was, was presented at um, the flood board meeting on Monday. And so if you are interested in seeing some very basic conceptuals, and the reason it was presented is because we want to go forward with all of our permitting, and you know, um, apparently the community development department had um, requested some input from the flood board because there will be a velocity zone permit that will be um, required for that dock expansion. Um, but anyway, you can see um, the concept, basic concept. I am thinking that some of those designs may may be amended going forward now that we're taking a pause uh, to, to rethink, uh, rethink our schedule and funding and contracts. Um, but uh, I do have, um, I can pass this down, this is essentially what is available online. And it is some, some of the basic concepts. Of course, during the flood board presentation, the schedule had shifted an entire year. <laughs> so any, anyway, but these, these were the preliminary plans that were, that were available um, as, as part of that presentation. And uh, anyway, I will have more information as it becomes available. And um, that's my... Uh, that's my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Sure. Uh, question? Carl? I got a couple, if you don't mind. Um, I just came back from a trip to Fairbanks. Uh, noticed a good portion of the grade has not been plowed. Uh, that would suggest to me there's no need to plow. So why is activity slowed down on a railroad this winter? Why has activity slowed down? Yeah. Um, I have no sense that activity has slowed down. Okay. Um, not, not, not on my end of the line. Um, even with the adverse weather that we've had, we um, had regular tra train, uh, train shipments of frac sand northward um, almost on a weekly basis. On, on the track or on putting on semis? Well, both, but largely to train to Fairbanks, um, so I can... Okay. 
Well, I, the reason I asked, uh, the, it would have to be Dwayne at this point, but, uh, uh, is because I think the health of the railroad is, is vital to sewer. And, you know, taking the pulse of the railroad, it, the track is the railroad. However, the conversion of freight to the highway has another big impact to the East Peninsula community and the, and the, and the highways. Still may be revenue to the, to the railroad, but it's a different kind of impact on the community. I, I can tell you that the railroad <laughs> benefits when inbound freight goes to train and moves north and uh, that is that is certainly our interest we don't uh, we don't want to see uh, uh, everything leave rubber tire and uh, to that end we're you know doing what we can do good okay I have another one uh, a lot of discussion around the dock including the potential sale of home electric and everything else so this project started uh, at what seemed like a lot of money but it's like blown two and a half times that. Uh, at the same time, other communities are pushing very, very hard for their port developments. Um, what what can any of us here in Seward do to help uh, help this that we that maybe we're not doing? Yeah, promote this. Right, right. So um, you know we've had. We've had, you know, strategic planning meetings, and we've um, taken community input. Um, clearly, uh, um, we do, speaking, you know, the editorial we for the railroad, um, we do request support um, in kind from the municipality uh, support. Uh, we've been getting it. We've been getting it. I don't think what we're seeing here is uh, uh, a result of um, uh, any lack of community support or, or, or enthusiasm. Um, there are just uh, there are just other issues, uh, other issues in play. Uh, not the least of which is the increasing cost. As uh, the pencils get sharpened, um, you know the numbers. The numbers were just getting uh, larger. Those costs are mitigated. Costs up front are mitigated by revenue potential revenue. So, okay. Any other questions, uh, Steve? Could I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. Is Dwayne, does the railroad view <clears throat> the Whittier Punitotum Corp project as, you know, that project is obviously moving forward? I know there's been some thought or suggestion that, and I'm just going to use the term competing, that that project moving forward more expeditiously than the Seward project. Is, is it the railroad's view that that could have any negative impact on the number of ships that visit Seward if that Whittier project is completed before the Seward project? Uh, I I don't I don't personally hold hold that opinion. I, I think the greater threat really is that we need to phase a dock project in a way that doesn't bring significant disruption to our customers. Hmm. You know, that I think would have real impact. I you know, looking at the growth the year over year, the number of ships increasing, I think there's enough business. I think there's enough business, uh, but just as our project goes, we have to be careful and do the right thing as we as we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking to competition on the on the Whittier side, I you know wish them luck. Oh, yeah. I think we all do. I don't have it. What is that? What, the tide, all ships rise on the rising tide, or whatever. That's fine. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, and I realize there's a potential conflict, uh, board member Atwood, uh, but if you had any personal views that you want to express as a board member, if you can step outside of your role as a railroad, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly welcome. But I, I think you do a good job balancing uh, you. your goal. Your goal. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, we're at the presentations, and I think we're all sort of looking forward to this. Uh, we have the discussion of the utility infrastructure. Patrick, you're here to present for the utility. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and lead us through that, and then uh, we'll have a chance for questions. Can we turn the lights out? Uh, would that work? I get it. Yeah. Oh, thumb curtain. Oh.
my uh, first time ever being in one of these, so I just introduced myself. Uh, guys. Well, you're going to be scrutinized, so don't get nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. Uh, so I'm Patrick Burnett, uh, out of town. I'm the uh, power operations supervisor for the sewer electric systems. And I'm just going to give you a quick update on what we are looking forward to this summer and going into winter for the Nash Road project. So projects uh, is be going from this year and rolling into next year. Um, part of the Nash Road rebuild um, to a highway upgrade that's basically from Nash Road to the power, uh, power plant. Uh, we'll be working on a substation rebuild at Fort Raymond and Line. Line will be in 24 and Fort Raymond will be this summer. And right now we are at an estimate of 14 to 15 million dollars, uh, which is covered mostly by the revenue bond. Um, today we've uh, we're about at nine million of the revenue bond between nine and ten. Uh, my uh, supervisor has more better you know pulse on that than I do. Um, we've. Uh, Brought to you, the electric department has uh, talked to you about shared costs about revenue bond uh, and will be paid from the electric enterprise fund. Hey, Chris, can you get that one too, please? There we go. <laughs> Perfect. So we wanted to start uh, phase two this and not phase one this summer or this spring, um, but. The uh, fly line of the bend and how, how it's going right now, we had decided to actually go in order. Uh, we are starting with phase one uh, at the end of April and beginning of uh, May. Um, we're bringing in Sturgeon. They won the bid uh, for the construction part of it. And <coughs> they will be beginning with doing some blasting up and down uh, mile four towards the, on the cliff side to get down to what uh, grades they need for the new poles going in. They'll be doing dig, uh, digging for culverts um, and the anchor installations of the poles that will require anchors. Uh, toward the third week of May, um, they will begin scheduled outages um, with uh, the neighborhoods over in the uh, Nash Woods area the prison and JAG. We are currently uh, uh, setting ourselves up with generation across the bay for when everything is taken down so we uh, the outages will be at a minimum. Uh, we have uh, one transformer that will be running uh, 365 for the entire uh, length of the, that part of the project and we'll have a second backup um, parallel with it so JAG will not have any disruption or as little as disruption as possible uh, using the sinker lift. Um, and at that time, we'll, they will start uh, putting in poles. It should be fairly quickly on that. Um, they'll continue doing the pole installations throughout June. And once poles are all in, they will start doing wiring transfers. Um, and then retiring the old transmission in July. Uh, they'll be continuing it. And in early, mid-July, we have clean up of the right away of the road, basically, of all the work to be done. And they should be buttoned up by that time. Um, what is not on there, and I should have added it, and I apologize, uh, at the same time in July, uh, we'll be getting the Fort Raymond project. I left a pre-bid meeting this morning to, to be here um, to talk about this. We are starting that. The transmission um, at Fort Raymond will be moving one trans taking one transformer and moving it out of basically the way of where the new transformer will be going to. And we'll be hooking it back up um, for the rest of the uh, project until the two transformers are, the new transformers going from 69 kV to 115 kV um, 
are installed. And that way we try to keep ourselves as little outages as possible. That is the biggest goal is to not have blackouts for the community. Um, this is uh, in 2024 or end of this year will be tentative. Um, we want to begin phase two over in between Salmo Creek and a highway. Phase one, I'm sorry if I didn't bring that up, uh, is from Salmo Creek to SMIC. Uh, but from Salmo Creek to the highway, there are some swampy areas where our poles are at. And the best way to get to them is for ins installation will be to wait till it's frozen. For, uh, so we can put rig mats out there and the uh, construction company can work safely and not have to worry about their equipment uh, getting damaged from the environment. These are just some quick pictures of what it is. Uh, I'm sure these pictures have gone around through city council. But they're just to show what uh, 40 years, 40 plus years of not taking care of the system looks like. Uh, the Spring Creek substation, uh, a, near, a nearly complete rebuild of the substation. Um, they'll be rebuilding uh, the failing load tap centers, the LTCs, uh, that control voltage and replace oil filled breakers. Uh, so it's basically going to be a brand new everything up there. Um, they're going to be replacing the ground grid and the fencing. And we'll be including a refurbishment of the 25 MBA. Uh, 69 by 115 kV 4.5 volt uh, transformer that's out of line. We're going to move that from line to uh, Spring Creek mm. so we can have dual transformers up there. Um, and the projected estimate will be about three and a half to four million dollars. Any questions? Question? Um, I have, I guess, a, a kind of a comment. Um, I'm sit on the uh, Super Creek Flooded Service Advisory Board, and we've spent some money on Sawmill Creek uh, for uh, removal of aggregate, you know, clearance of the bridge, uh, that sort of thing. Um, it's a real dynamic stretch going from there, and then, as you mentioned, you know, swampy locations along along Nash Road. And, don't envy your task to try to get some some stable pole construction taken care of. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking to myself. I was wondering about undergrounding, but I can see that that's not even not even a possibility. Then the the cost alone for underground, we would be in that section would be boring, and I don't think we really dove too deep into that yeah. just because of cost alone. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, let me start at the back work forward. The transformer at Long yes. uh, has not been replaced to date? It, not to date. Okay. It is, so, it is actually, the new transformer is ready and to ship. However, during our phasing, is the company that built it built that one first, but not the one that we need. First, so it's there, and now our the one that we need will be arriving in sewer uh, July. So, so let me understand that, that currently that brings in 115 kVA from Dave's Creek mm -hmm. to Line, drops down to 69. That's correct. So the leg from Line to sewer currently is limited to 69. You'll upgrade that to 115. The line, yes, is the line is rated right now for 115 uh, from line to Fort Raymond to a point right before Fort Raymond um, and we're all we're doing is taking from Fort Raymond out to the SMEG um, and updating that and then updating our transport. Filling the line up. Yes. So the, with with the with the line 69 kVA line the transformer you said you were going to have tandem transformers at Spring Creek? That's correct. The both both 69 kVA? One, so they are dual, 115, 69. Okay. And is that for distribution? That would I mean, be for transmission and distribution. So that brings me to the next question that I had. With 
with the upgrade you're doing, certainly you showed the, the main line. Um, is there is there a distribution upgrade going on in some of the community? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the home, one of the sites, the homestead sites along Nash Road, Nash Woods area. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the upgrade. So a lot of the transmission has distribution on it. In fact, pretty much the whole length of it will have a distribution on the same pole. So yes, those will be getting uh, not upgraded, but repaired, replaced, refurbished, um, but no upgrade. I mean, I really want to lead you down a hole that will give you an idea. We're just putting in new and update. Updating would be the best, best description of it. And a really simple question, are, are, are modern poles, um, is the life expend, extend, expend, expected life for the poles today with modern methods any better than it was when these poles were put in? I would believe so, yes. Uh, I uh, am not a lineman. I just am the engineer, or mm -hmm. was the field engineer and now I'm the operations supervisor. Um, but what I've heard in discussions that we've had in the last two years have been here is that most poles, today's standard, can last up to around 30 to 40 years. 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Ben? Sure. Um, it was interesting to hear uh, you're going to have uh, uh, generation assets deployed out to the SMIC side. I'm kind of wondering if you know like how long um, those will be in operation. And what so we have them there now. Okay. We have um, rented for the next, let me say, into June, into the beginning of June. And so hopefully by that time, that basically we haven't rented for the extent that we expect the project to last. So are these going to be used for like a, a, a scheduled uh, period of time or just kind of as the project evolves? So one will be running. At the whole time. Okay. Wow. Okay. That way, there's no need for shutdown, and then we disconnect power, and now we got to run this generator up, get it up to in parallel. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to keep running. So yeah, the customers out there will appreciate that, I'm sure. So, um, speaking of customers, uh, yeah. the, um, the switching uh, sub uh, subdivisions on and off uh, frequently. Um, is is there any? any way you can get notified when those are going to occur um, so, so I have uh, just put an order out and hopefully we get them soon we're going to be putting up road signs that have date and time mm, okay. and obviously we hope you don't hold us exactly to the time but definitely the day yeah. we're going to expect like outage from 8 to 10. Yeah I'm, I'm actually kind of looking at it from the um, the voltage excursions that uh, can can happen um, when um, heavy loads are switched on and off. So, if uh, if we could get a heads up on that, it'd be helpful for us oh, too. Will, so. uh, I believe most schedule outages, we're going to try to put a, a release uh, one on our uh, Facebook page. And hopefully, people have started hmm. liking that page and start getting information. And from there, hopefully, people will take that information and you know. Facebook, there's that, and then we'll be, uh, our director will be uh, putting out notice in the newspaper. Okay. Not every time, but just a general be aware. We have outages that will be happening from here to there. Um, so if you get an outage, don't, you don't need to call in. We're already on it. We'll fix it, inspect it. And again, with the uh, road signs, we're going to up at the, not beginning of Nash, but beginning of Nash Woods area closer to the residential area. Um, there'll be a nice big, I believe it's a white sign that I ordered. It's a 48 by 48 inch uh, askew sign that will be there visible for uh, people driving by. Um, other than spending the time doing door knockers, mm -hmm. at every time I don't expect us to be doing that, but we hope that we have these kind of outages to a minimum and to a minimum time. So Facebook page. That's, that's I, I just threw it out there. Okay, I'm yeah, that's good. No, yeah. It. It's, an, it's an option that we have. That's great. Um, but we will be 
really keeping the uh, uh, citizens informed as much as possible, like radio, newspaper, Facebook, road signs. People can call in, talk directly to us um, if they're concerned. That's about it. And again, other than just going door to door. Mm -hmm. Yes, Linda? Um, I don't know if this would be appropriate, but can you send out a Nixle one that you're about to have an outage? What is a Nixle? Yeah. It's like the, um, it's what the police use. Oh. You know, as a, and it comes as a text message. Because, you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm kind of like not engaged on Facebook that and much a lot anymore. Of are. In fact, our I mean, not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll go on there, but if, if I, if it were an outage that were going to impact me, I'm not going to see it there. But I would get a text message, you know. I mean, I would see it if it came as a nixel. Um, and I don't know if you can cross over. It's not really. That, that's a great idea, and I never would have thought about that. And I will take that to uh, Rob Montgomery and uh, IT, whoever puts that out. Um, I don't know how that would work, though. No, we got we have to get like, everybody's. So our Nixel is actually tied in with our Facebook, and so you can, I I can show you guys. There's a way to simultaneously when you put out the Facebook post, it also sends out the Nixel with the same content. So yeah, that's also perfect. Mm. All right, on Facebook. Right. Perfect. Yeah, we can. Dustin will take care of you. Yeah, yeah. I agree. That's that's worthy. In 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 Moose Pass, we convinced Chugach Electric to put out uh, text messages for their planned outages. That anybody who wants to sign up just provides their their phone number, and we get a hit. Uh, and they use the same disclaimer disclaimer pat that uh, this is close to the time we expect. But it's important to shut your computer down or something like that ahead of some of these. Uh, the bumps. My concern with the outages is that we have persons that are unaware of their backup generation uh, uh. can backfeed. So that's we we need to find a way of getting some sort of notice out there as well when these happen. Make sure that you're disconnected. What's the quantity of uh, of these uh, outages that you're expecting? Half a dozen? Three? I have to refer to. Bruce Foreman and talk to a contractor. Um, we just have right now a time frame. Mm -hmm. So once the contractor's in on site and beginning to start work, that's when really everything's going to be determined. I'm sure they'll be encouraged to keep it to a minimum. Uh, Carl? Yeah, uh, Patrick, yeah. My question is this is is these outage are these outages going to affect the whole distribution grid? for the city of Seward? No, it's all Or just primarily Nash Road area? Nash Road area. All right. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know, this. you may not know the answer to this, but we, we're talking about all of this building and expansion, and at the same time, we're also talking about selling the utility. So are these projects going to just, if the utility sells, they'll just continue, but it'll be through... HEA then, or is there a risk that this stuff stops and has to be renegotiated? Or no, the projects are going ahead. They have to. There will be no stop in these projects. Okay. Either it sells or it doesn't. Um, these projects are going through. Okay. I think that's actually a question for administration who's been involved with the contract. Well, there's there's two people. There's to Pat's point. There's the operational piece of the projects moving forward. Right. I, on the financial side, the question has been asked too, regarding the sale price. So we've got a ten million dollar bond to do the work that Pat just presented on. There's going to be a second bond to cover about another seven million. So the purchase price of the utility will go up for every. Every dollar that's spent on infrastructure upgrades, that dollar will be added to the purchase price. Okay. Of course, we're going to have to pay off whatever debt we're using bonding for these improvements. So that, that will have to be paid off. But it's good for people to understand, as we go spend a dollar on improving the infrastructure, we're going to get that back when we sell, hopefully, when we sell the utility to HEA. We're, the city will be compensated back for that. 
Yeah, I, I would agree. My read of the contract purchase agreement does show the continuity, uh, and there's a method for for, for the costs to be uh, 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 continued. Any other questions? Anything for us beyond what you've done? Thank you very much. No, I, it's the first time ever being here, and I actually, when I was told what, uh, to present a I'm like, what's a <laughs> But now I know. We have an open I, I, seat. It seems like you guys do a great job, <laughs> and uh, being in part of the community, I appreciate you guys' help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, before you go on, can I just say something really important? So, I don't know if it's just my packet, but I have no text on these pages. So I would just ask that you look at what's online because the community needs to be able to see the entire presentation. What pages are you talking about? Uh, looks like 56, 55. The whole pack app update electric infrastructure. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's missing all the text. Oh, uh, exactly, exactly. Um, so, if you could just do a housekeeping note and get that updated on lines for people, that would be great. You could upload the presentation as a separate, separate item. item. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah, Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you Patrick. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Uh, our next order of business is the uh, SPIC uh, development plan at page 60 that's my, in, in your packet. Here's mine. Didn't we change the order? I'm sorry. I, I apologize. The, 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 uh, the next item would be discuss attorney's notes on uh, page 80. Thank you. There's an agenda state a statement uh, oh, from the administration. And I'll just read the admin the, the background justification and we'll go into discussion. PAC app passed resolution 2023-002 during March 8th meeting. Subsequently, the city attorney reviewed the draft ordinance and sent the administrative the administration recommended changes. A copy of the red line version of the ordinance as amended by the attorney is attached for PAC to review today. City administration desired to have the board review these edits prior to draft ordinance going to council. I would suggest you also read the memo from the attorney. Okay. Uh, well, this may be, I've read this before, I sort of stopped at the first sentence, but there's a lot of red ink on this, but most of it's formatting. The Planning and Zoning Commission code section was updated last November, so I updated some things to mirror the formatting in that section. I split 20.30.320 into two sections, 2.30.318 and 2. 30.323 and then then changed 2.30.320 to be similar in structure to the layout of planning and zoning meeting section. The changes are primarily to keep code looking cohesive, uniform, and easier for the everyday person to navigate, though there are some additional benefits. The substantive, substantive changes from what was already there, mostly involved in 20.30.315C, as the board can't dismiss a member, allowing them to dismiss an appointed member would essentially give them power to direct the council. As the council created the board, it always has the higher power to direct the board, direct, and the board can only petition the council to make changes on its behalf. I didn't update the agenda statement yet. I wanted to see if you had any feedback on the changes to the ordinance before I updated it. Let me know if there is anything we need to kick around again or any of my comments that you want to address, Cody. And then another note uh, to discuss this. So with that, we have 
the red line version of something that we've dealt with a little bit earlier. Uh, who would like to begin the discussion? I don't want to read through every one of these things. Leave it. Thank you, um, Chair Jaffa. So, a couple things, and I guess for Chris, administration's view would be that there's two different types of recommended changes that the attorney provided. Most of it, to his point, is formatting. Our our take on this historically has been that housekeeping changes can be made to legislation without. So those items, Chris, if you want to weigh in on that, I guess my view is for the quote, I think for the formatting or a housekeeping type stuff, you know, the uppercase, the lowercase, the spacing, we can take care of that in the version that goes to council. But remaining the regarding the substantive changes, um, we can't change those before it goes to council. The ordinance that goes to council needs to be the version that the board voted on and approved on. And so if there's additional changes, I guess my thought, and again, Chris, feel free to weigh in on what I'm going to say, is that the board today generate a list of any recommendations that the attorney has provided so that when you interact with the council, you can recommend that they amend the ordinance accordingly. Do you have any, no, that does that sound? Correct, yeah. And I guess the last thing I would say is that um, I think of the recommended changes, the only one, just talking to Cody about it, that is, I guess we, we must fix is in 2.30315C, but all the other ones are the attorney's recommendations. Um, are they, we typically always follow the attorney's advice on these types of things, and in fact, code specifies that before an ordinance moves forward, the attorney shall review it. Um, so we fulfilled that requirement, but I guess PACAB needs to talk about kind of the, which, it'll, the ordinance will go to council for an introduction at April 24, and then May 8th for enactment, and I would really suggest that the board today generates the list of proposed amendments that you could talk to council about on May 8th. Chris, is that, that sounds good? Yeah. I was just kind of um, puzzling over the uh, dismissal of an appointed member. I guess when we went over that and made those amendments, I didn't have the impression that PACAB was saying that they would dismiss a member on their own and so I'm a little surprised by the attorney's uh, interpretation of that. I'm not. Excuse me. Uh, if I might, I think we need to have this discussion. I, 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 I don't know if we need a motion to approve this or not. It's already been approved. And, and I agree with you, the editorial changes are a, a no-brainer. Uh, unless they change the interpretation. Technically, today, you're not voting on anything. You've already voted to approve the resolution to recommend council approve the ordinance, which code says that the board may recommend an ordinance. Right. So we've made recommendations. The attorneys come back and... Uh, and, and, and said, this is a mess. <laughs> well, he made his cut. So it hasn't, except for one condition, he hasn't substantially changed anything. And that's whether PACAP can dismiss somebody or not. I, I don't think that's what we said. I agree with the clerk. I do not think our intent was to say we could dismiss somebody out of, out of hand, but it could have been interpreted that. If you want to clean it up, that, that's fine. Um, I personally don't have any objection to any of this. I also don't think any of it was necessary, but we've gotten this so far. And I, I will vote, frankly, on what's in front of me. If we have to vote, I would vote just what's in front of me and let it move on. Sure, yeah, I, uh, there's one area, though, um, that I, I didn't think that we um, agreed on. We talked about having one regular meeting a month and then a special meeting or work session as necessary. It clearly says two regular meetings a month on the first and third Wednesday of the month. 
What clause of that? It's in uh, it's in 230-320. It says regular meetings shall be held on the first and third Wednesday of each month, including June, July, August in the city council chambers. A meeting can be a work session though, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I think we're just, uh, let's we not get bogged down. No, yeah. let's just not get bogged down in that. Because it's really just saying we meet twice a month. It's not saying what kind of a meeting it is. Just that we meet twice a month. Well, actually, it does specify what you're doing. But I, I'm just saying that it's there. Is that what we intended? You know, so. Well, I, I remember the discussion and it was uh, we... Uh, Instead of just calling it a work session, we would like to call it a meeting because that gave, gives us a little more option, a little more power, right? and not have to carry that stuff that decided at the work session to the next meeting. Right. And right. that's kind of what we were Right, which is why meetings. I think we just, we just decided that if we just called them meetings, they could be work sessions. If, they, if we needed a work session, it could be a special meeting, it could be a regular meeting. My take on this is they're 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 calling it's saying that you're going to have meetings. I don't think there's anything here that prevents you from having additional meetings if you want, or re-describing those meetings if you need to. Uh, there needs to be, obviously, if a if a board member wants the chair, or vice chair, or administration to change a meeting, they have that authority under code to call and say, I really need this. Uh, I have this issue. So it, it's, this, this document is a guiding document, but it, it's not the only way to accomplish the goals or accomplish things. So don't, don't, I would suggest that every board member take a look at what your options are as far as calling meetings or requesting action from, from the administration or from uh, the chair or vice chair. And I believe two members can call for a special meeting anytime. Two, two members, the chair, or the city manager. So that, that gives ample opportunity to call meetings in, in July or August if you have, absolutely had to. But they've got to have something down here. Chair sure, Jaffa? Um, yes. This might be a question for the clerk, but a, a regular meeting is, is clearly a a type of meeting it's not regularly Correct. occurring and, and by that by specifying every two two meetings a month and then we are basically asking that we go through our regular meeting agenda packet twice a month which would be a big change from what we've been doing that's so, in that uh, paragraph a the yeah, a and then uh, special meetings is under under paragraph B but that the yeah, regular meeting yeah, that, that, that's what this is. You know, it's right on the cover this, of the packet. Right. It's a regular meeting as opposed to a work session. Yeah, we don't want that, I don't think. I what if it just got rid of the word regular and it just said meetings? Meetings shall be held on the first and third Wednesday of each month. Can I, can I ask the clerk or the administration, please, for the, the key of these changes? I see it in the boxes out here a little bit, but we have the original small text uh, black that's been lined out. Then we have a, a red text that's been slightly lined out. Then we have some bold red text. Then we have some bold black text. What is, what is the sequence of changes here? There's a bold black text, the last addition so the if I may uh, the uh, the I'm gonna call it the regular text the regular black unbolded text is the old code verbiage the bolded italics and underlined is the new language which the board passed in your resolution if that makes sense the red verbiage is the, the attorney's recommendations. Uh, 
So then the, the attorney has made some recommendations that he's lined out himself? Correct. So, uh, Chair Joffa, if I may, so if I'm reading this right, Pat Cab's original intention was the Port and Commerce Advisory Board meets on the first and third Wednesday of each month, which is getting back to what Board Member Smith was saying, but the attorney has specifically changed it to regular meetings. Is that, uh, is that right, Stephen? Correct. Okay. That's the only change on here that I do not support because I think it bogs us down. I think if it just said meetings, meetings shall be held on the first and third Wednesday of each month. Well, uh, board member Fiketa and others, I think that's, that's fine, but you need to somehow say a regular meeting will be held at least once a month. And that's the intent of, of the code. Uh, okay, so meetings shall be held on the first and third Wednesday of each month, excluding June, July, and August, in the city council chambers. At least one meeting a month shall be a regular meeting. Works for me. Works for me, too. Go across the board. Mm -hmm. I'm getting nods from Mark Walker. And we're able to present that to council as a recommendation from today's meeting without a motion. Yeah, you're not voting on anything today. You're just discussing any further changes yeah, okay. that you'll recommend. So at the May 8th meeting, the board should have a list of the rec further recommended changes that you would request council make to well, the ordinance. Well, would we just give them this with that one modification? Well, and I, I guess I'll defer to the parliamentarian on this one, but mm -hmm. the mechanics of it is the ordinance will come so after this meeting Chris and I'll work together to update the ordinance that PACAB passed to make the house I'm gonna call them housekeeping changes council will be presented then with that ordinance as you passed it plus the housekeeping changes and then if you wish to have further changes made you will propose additional amendments to council. You're not going to just hand them this list. You'll say, and Chris, I, to the parliamentarian, mm -hmm. mechanically, that, that's how that would work, correct? So council's going to, you, you'll need to say, hey, council, we want to make the following amendment to 2.30315. It shall read as blah, blah, blah. And then they'll vote on the amendment to the ordinance. And then subsequent amendments to the ordinance before they vote on the full ordinance. So you're not just going to give them this list and say adopt a substitute. Because PACAB is no longer making amendments to this. That's already been Correct. finalized. So the next level is council to make amendments to it. So if you have recommendations for council, you'd advise them. But the changes would come from council at this point. I'll come back to that in a second, Carl. Yeah, I, I think maybe uh, maybe the recommendation be, should be th this way. Meetings shall be held on the first and third Wednesdays of each month, including June, July, Aug and August in the City Council Chambers, with the first Wednesday being considered as the regular meeting, simply because that's been our standard all along. Well, that's essentially what Board Member Cat said with a little yeah. bit yeah. additional modifier for the first Wednesday. Yeah. I, I don't see conflict with that. If if we if we all agree on this uh, without objection, how I don't understand exactly how we communicate to uh, to council. Do we direct the clerk to write a letter? Uh, does the chair write a letter? How do we communicate this request to the to the council? We could probably include it in the packet as a backup document. A list of the proposed amendments. So, without objection, the chair would ask the clerk to provide such a letter to the council with that recommendation, that, that language that we just discussed. And if you would, could you read that language back to us as, as presented by Board Member Hughes and Paquette? 
Oh, well, let me uh, clarify. Do you okay. want to leave it as um, just one of those meetings a month would be a regular meeting, or specifically the first one would be a regular meeting? The, the, first, the first meeting of the month would be a regular meeting. So at the minimum, the first meeting of the month would be a regular meeting? Correct. Yeah, that's pretty clear. I can relay that to council. And, and I don't see any reason to change item B, special meetings. Maybe it says. Right. So. When, when will this appear before council? It'll be introduced on April 24th and it'll come back for the public hearing and enactment on May 8th. So shouldn't we be there on the 24th to, to bring up this issue that we have these amendments we're going to recommend? Well, council's not going to vote to approve the ordinance until it holds the public hearing on May 8th. Right. Typically, ordinances are, well, ordinances are always on the consent agenda. Right. It's theoretically possible that council could pull it for discussion on April 24th. In the three years that I've been here, I think that's happened once. Wouldn't it still be good for one of us to be there to give them a heads up? We're going to be here on the 8th. We just want to let you know the attorney gave us some... Uh, housekeeping details and as a result we're going to make a re some recommendations to adopt those attorney recommendations sure and if the board or board board member or board members um, you know even if it stays on consent you can always make that statement during public comment right right Right. Sure. Yeah, the, just a, a small uh, quest, question here. On page 86 at the top, we've got um, uh, item B, and it um, refers uh, to the to the clerk, uh, the clerk to the commission. And uh, I was just wondering about if this body does it matter if this body is referred to as a board or a commission? It should be board. In this case, but I mm -hmm. think I think this language by the attorney was written as a as a blanket that, that included uh, the planning and zoning and, and the uh, his, history group. So for this group, it should specifically say board. Thank you, uh, Chair Jaffa. If I yeah. may, did you want to revisit on page eighty four the? In terms of office filling vacancies with the attendance and all that, because that was pretty heavily modified. Looks like um, they added regular meetings, which would not include work sessions for attendance, and I know that's something that Thank you. Thank has been discussed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk. Uh, if any on the board uh, would like to discuss that, now would be a good time. Uh, I've looked at it. I don't have any problem with it. I, I think that ultimately the decision with lays with consul and if someone is uh, horribly misperforming uh, I think that can be brought up in the council meeting uh, and the other thing that I would note is that and I don't know if this will continue under another administration but the current administration is keeping uh, 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 tally of uh, attendance so uh, to some degree it, it uh, provides a greater opportunity for council to see <clears throat> if there's a problem with attendance I'm not sure I'd like to be time carded like that, but uh, <laughs> but it it, it 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 is something that has shown up at some of the other boards so, and commissions. But if if there's a discussion on this item, uh, let's have it now. Yeah. So we had made it so that we were talking about meetings and not specifying between work sessions, regular meetings. Uh, and now it reads, following a member's absence from three consecutive meetings or 25% or more of regular meetings of the board within a 12-month period, then we can discuss whether or not we want to ask uh, council to give us a new member. Um, I don't know whether we want that word regular in there again. Or what was the intent? 
if I might, I believe that this is a, a, something that was debated uh, or discussed in planning and zoning, and I think this language mirrors what they agreed to already. Is that, is that how the attorney put this language in here? I should remember, because we just did Title II at the last meeting and it's coming back, I don't recall. I, I, I know um, this has very much been a topic um, just to be frank, and you could look at it in every council meeting packet in the city manager's report, there's a board and commission attendance recap. Um, it's been a struggle with planning and zoning, and um, they're a, I don't know how to say it. There's been a number of projects that haven't moved forward because of lack of quorum, and so council has asked that city administration provide in every council meeting an update on uh, commissioner attendance and meetings. Um, their requirements, I believe, and I'll have to defer back to the ordinance and give you a response, but I want to say it includes work sessions because in talking with the community development director, you can make a strong argument that those work sessions are every bit as important as a regular meeting because that's when you, that's when a lot of the sausage gets made in that dialogue. If you were to ask the administration's view, I would strike the word regular because having uh, having a quorum is every bit as necessary during a work session as it is during a special a regular meeting. Right. So I don't I see this from the attorney as not legal advice but uh, policy advice, mm -hmm. and I think we can decide that we disagree with that policy advice. Yeah, it would be my recommendation to get the word regular out of there. I have a question for administration. Um, since we're in the process of tracking attendance, I'm a little concerned about the 12-month period because that sounds like something that could shift, like it could be September through September rather than one set calendar year. And that would make it almost impossible to keep track yeah, then it's a rolling time frame, right? And it's not a calendar year, is it? I had the same thought. Well, I think that's exactly what it should be. I mean, you, if you start and stop in January and somebody is stellar for a period of time and then all of a sudden goes delinquent, I mean, it, I think it should be rolling. And if in the last 12 months something changed and they can no longer attend, the last 12 months, and they can no longer attend, then they're, that, that's the condition that you're dealing with, in my opinion. Let, let's go back to just finish this scheduled business. Uh, uh, the attorney lined out the word scheduled. Uh, the regular had been lined out, and if they just reinstalled scheduled, that would be special meetings, work sessions, or, or any other kind of meeting. Would that I had a question on that actually. I was wondering if the special meeting counts as scheduled because it's not part of your regular church schedule. Church schedule. The, the public announced the meeting. I take I just, that. That I would just, be my opinion. It's I was an just playing, uh, I guess, devil's advocate in a way that you've all set aside your, you know, first and third Wednesday of each month, and then a special meeting comes up out of that time frame, and you should be penalized for not being able to make it. If it comes up on, like, say, a Thursday or a Tuesday. Well, unfortunately, in my opinion, it's not a matter of penalized or, or benefited. It's a matter of you, know, you step up to do a duty and you can't perform it. Uh, it's not your fault necessarily, but you can't perform it. And the city and the citizens shouldn't suffer as a result. That's the intent here is to not let somebody's personal life needs interfere with it. Now, I suspect that you could always come before a group and say, geez, I, you know, I just had a heart attack and uh, I'm, I'm recovering and I'll be there. But it's okay, well, they could say, well, when you recover, come back. <laughs> or or we could say you tolerate it. But I, I don't think it's a penalty. Uh, it, it's more a penalty for the city not to get the benefit of, uh, of the board. I know the special meetings can be pretty short notice, you know, 24 well, they, hours. They, they, they can, and, and personally I could say, geez, I can't make it. That happens with some other meetings. Uh, uh, I can't make it and feel bad about it. 
Court of Appeals? Well, first, uh, first, my first question is, you suggested getting rid of regular and putting scheduled back in? Well, regular, in, in, in paragraph C, yeah, regular is already lined out. Actually, scheduled is lined out. And scheduled has been lined out. Yeah. But I think that should be returned, restored. Okay. So any scheduled meeting that would have public notice, and, right. and and that gives you, can you have a special meeting in three days? Can't you? What's the what's the notice period? Uh, Twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. That's short notice, mm -hmm. and you might not get a quorum. Now, I don't think we should worry about including special meetings in this scenario here. Uh, this is just. Our regular scheduled meetings are our regular meetings, or excuse me, scheduled meetings are the first and third Wednesday of the month. All right, and that's what this is pertaining to. To try to lump special meetings into that is creating a much more difficult scenario. And that's what I was getting at. It's kind of like, I mean, you're going to get a black mark on your attendance record for not attending a special meeting. Because it was last minute and right. you had no idea and you went to Anchorage for a doctor's appointment or something. You know, yeah. Yes. I just have a question perhaps for administration. You'd mentioned that uh, perhaps council was taking note of attendance of uh, planning and zoning um, commissioners. Uh, I assume that then the council has some recourse. And if that already exists, maybe maybe we're overthinking this. I don't. What's your question, doing? So that was more of a statement. If the council has recourse to address absenteeism, then what are we doing? Well, council can dismiss a member mm -hmm. regardless. Um, I think the other thing to keep in mind. That in the, the context that they're looking at it is when they reappoint, um, then they've requested the, me the members' attendance. And that extends beyond the board and commission members also to, we just had the, um, Chris, you might have to help me out on this one, the um, Cook Inlet Aquaculture Association members' seat was just renewed and the Prince William Sound Regional Advisory Commission and the council actually, they spent about 15 minutes th with the Prince William Sound position and they selected a new member specifically based off of attendance. So it's not just about removal, it's also about reappointment and that sort of thing. Yeah, See, this is new too because they never were getting those attendance sheets before this. So they've, they've gotten them through the minutes, but right. I mean the minutes, well, number one, the minutes only track regular meetings, correct, Chris, not work correct. sessions? Right. And then the minutes, I mean, it's, to some degree, council said, you know, that's kind of buried in the back of the packet, and it's right. hard to kind of, you can't, it's hard, it's very cumbersome to look back at historical, okay, so board member Jaffa was absent at the last meeting. Well, that's not a big deal if it was that meeting. It is a big deal if it was the last five meetings, and P&Z actually has a, a commissioner who meets that category. Well, uh, they've, asked, they've asked administration to tabulate the meeting. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Board Member Walker. Yeah, the uh, discussion on special meetings. We're all assuming that there'll be two meetings a month. One of them will be a work session or kind of a special meeting. We could have an issue come up where there's maybe in 10 days two or three meetings because it, we really need to work on it and maybe one board member might, in that block of time, not be able to be there and miss three meetings in, in less than two weeks. So when you throw in special meetings into that, it, it changes how things can come out. That's all I got. And a special so, meeting could also come up this, during this is meetings. not mandated. It, it's not three strikes and you're out. This is three strikes and maybe can be dismissed. I mean, yeah, right. so I mean, I think uh, hum uh, an explanation like an excused absence is easily uh, understood. So that three meetings for a real good reason would make sense. You know, a grandson's, a grandchild's wet birth or something like that might be a good enough reason. 
Yeah, Mr. Chair, I think you just made a very good point. You know, if you begin to talk about excused absences versus absences, if we make a distinction, there's there is a place uh, over there where there, the code uh, describes excused absences and the procedure is to uh, notify the clerk of an absence uh, and then the clerk will present to the board that uh, there is an excused absence. Anyone on the board or commission can question that and and call for the, the, the panel essentially to, to review that. It, it, just because somebody's absent uh, with an unexcused absence um, isn't, isn't a deal breaker either. But, Three in a row demonstrates something that can be dismissed, and I, I, I think code gives counsel, uh, like the system manager said, uh, that we all serve at the, the will of counsel, and uh, they can say, hey, we no longer want you as chair, Jaffa. And I think too, there there's some implied like reasonableness standard going on because both with the ordinance verbiage that. PACAB passed and with, with the attorney's suggestions for C, it says three meetings or 25% within a 12 month period. So if a new member starts in January and they miss the January meeting and the February meeting, they've missed more than 25% of the meetings after two meetings. And in theory, based on the verbiage, you could request the removal. So that I think with all this, there's going to be a reasonableness where the board's going to make a recommendation to council, and council's going to go, well, yeah, but, you know, Bruce missed one meeting in January and one meeting in February, so in theory, he's missed 100% of the meetings within <laughs> that time frame, but it's two meetings, so. I think we're down to, do we want to leave the, the word scheduled, or, or, or what do we want to do here? Let's not get hung up too far. This is just something we want to get to the council. Well, I personally would like to see regular reading go away and just have schedule because that's what our regular our meetings are scheduled meetings, the first and the third Wednesday. Anybody? Do we, if I don't hear any objection, uh, I, I won't bother polling the board. So, uh, if we could ask. Or include that uh, recommendation that, it, that, that the schedule be unlined out in a blue color or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other, anything else on on these? Good. Well, hopefully it'll get to council, and council won't have to waste too much or spend too much time on it. And. Uh, I certainly appreciate the, the system manager's comments on, on, on uh, attendance. Uh, I personally think this board's done a hell of a job. Uh, we have, in my experience, only had uh, one lack of quorum in the last several years. Okay. Um, the last item of business is this uh, infrastructure. Uh, Smith Infra development. No, Smith Smith development. On page 60, uh, Smith Development Plan. Smith right? Development Plan, correct. Okay. So we have used up a lot of our time. Uh, And I think we have looked at this to some degree. It's, uh, I know the uh, system manager has been involved. Norm has presented a lot of this to us. Uh, would the administration like to talk to this uh, uh, plan at all, specifically? Do you have anything? Um, I was here last time, you guys. We went through this. I, I believe we went page by page, but I can't recall. Do you want to go quickly page by page, or is there some just specific items that you guys would like to bring up again? I remember last time, uh, Board Member Wilkers had uh, some concern with Darren vessels and, you know, the salvaging those. I don't know if the SMIC is the right area for that, just it's a working boatyard. 
Um, not that it's not a bad idea, it just might not be the best place for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, anything specific that you guys just want to jump right into or just go quickly page by page? Well, I, I, let me start by saying this is this plan has now been implemented uh, as of March 8th, 2023. So what are we doing specifically in the review? Are we are we tweaking this plan or suggest, making suggestions for the future? Or what are we doing? Um, that, that's a great question. Okay, well, there, there's a couple things in here that have been brought up to me by the public that I think do need to be looked at. <coughs> And, and, and certainly in, in view of what uh, our system manager said about the U.S. Navy showing up, uh, there's not a strong enough reference in here about the, um, the FRC and, and future Coast Guard uh, activity. Uh, Last I heard, that is still, um, nothing's changed on that for tw 2024, is that correct? For the fast uh, cutter? They haven't given us I, a definitive date yet. I know it has moved forward with the property, um, but as far as the date set in stone, I have not heard anything on that. Well, does our plan want to hold a placeholder for that somehow or another? I mean, they've moved forward with the property over there. I think it's fair to say that it's moving forward, and if it is a plan, per se. I think that is the plan. It's if I may, on, uh, yep. some of these, um, I, I think one of the major updates I'm seeing is that the, uh, the Arcadis images have been updated. Is that correct? So we have current leaseholders, um, including the Coast Guard, on here now, um, which I think just looking at that picture really shows which the picture shows more than, than the words, maybe, in this case. So. Um, it's nice seeing some of the old names off of there and the new names um, on that. So we did update that. Yes, that's, is that page 75? Um, I don't have a number. Or, I'm sorry, 70. Oh, yeah, 75. Um, okay. 76, correct. Then 76. That looks really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been cleaned up and it's definitely more accurate now. Okay. Is Hamilton Construction still maintaining their lease since they moved everything off there? They. They are still there, yes, and you're correct, they did. They pulled everything off last fall yeah. Yeah, and took it southeast. How, if I might, how, how does, this, how does the uh, commercial development of the SMIC area uh, intertie with uh, the public, public use, beach use, uh, I don't know, fishing, kayaking, whatever? Do. Um, so during the salmon season, that just outside of the like North Dock area, that 11.44 acres, mm -hmm. there's a, a large area for parking there, and that we try to direct everybody to that for the beach use, and then you can go around. The last couple of years, we've pushed more people down Dallas or down Jellison, and then to Alga to try to keep that heavy traffic out of the actual working area. And then Public Works has done a great job of maintaining that road as well. Does to gain beach access um, behind the south side of JAG. Does, does that traffic uh, control become the harbor's issue? I mean, that seems somehow out of, a little bit out of it. No, and Public Works maintains that, that okay. road. We take care of everything. Um, as far as greater operations and snow removal within our yard, and then we'll, we venture out just a little bit down that Mustang. We'll clean that one. Sometimes touch on Olga, you know, if they're if they're busy, but we stay within our area. And I and I would guess I would I would ask that you you listen to the electric uh, department talk about the. Improvements to the harbor is uh, well the SMIC area actually. Uh, how does the harbor interface with them? I mean, is there? Did you identify future needs, uh, current needs? I believe there was. We did touch on that in our in some current and some needs that is expansion of um, like service pedestals, power service pedestals within our yard, and then 
water utility also mm -hmm. down one of the roads. Um, it's, but it's very um, small upgrades compared to what they're doing. So as the landlord essentially of the users over there, uh, including the big guy, uh, do they they're coming to you and saying here's our expected uh, needs? I haven't seen that. Maybe that goes through through Norm. Um, okay. But I have not seen anything that detailed from like Jag or any of them. We get more like the smaller requests from the shipyard users. I'm not trying to monopolize the comments here. Chair Jaffa, uh, you may be interested to know at last night's planning meeting, there was two public hearing uh, resolutions that passed. Uh, one was in regard to the Spring Creek day use area, or Spring Creek Beach, and the other one was for the 4th of July Beach parking and uh, you know access and that type of thing. Did they, did they act on those? Uh, they were both approved. And if I may touch on that, is that the, um, uh, like the water or the tideland access for the, for the Spring Creek? I'm sorry, campground, so the, is that what that was? Yeah, the, you know, the P&Z stuff is pretty complex. I don't want to misquote them, but it sounded like there was an issue with the north access being uh, trespassing on private property, and that was, I think, being worked on to make it more accessible to the public without Okay. But. And then the parking on the other end, just widening that to, and, and, I, and I believe like we did talk about that last maybe time. Maybe raising it up a bit so it wasn't in such a pit. Yes. Yeah, there's that, it's a little watery in there. Yeah. Terms. Yeah, and that's a summer project we were going to hit. We just ran out of time last year. Is, is there a conflict between the public use and any commercial user's use going on over there in that particular area you just noted, the, the south access to the river? Is, 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 is there, uh, I know at different times I've heard of conflict. It was, it was muddy and so they were forced to go into the JAG parking lot or something. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. I'm, it's, it's probably pretty minimal. You know, when people go out there, it's after hours too to walk on the beach and get some of that late evening sun. Maybe um, it definitely will help to have a larger parking lot okay. in that area for the public. So I'll speak to that. Take off my assistant city manager hat and put on my citizen of Seward hat. So I live out on Nash Road, and say my family visited Fourth of July Beach five times over the last six days in the evenings. And I think that the I'm not going to call it a conflict, but what's going on is Jag's got a tremendous need for parking for their employees there and right now if you go out to recreate a fourth of july beach that kind of lower i think as chris called it the pit right by the boulders there has got about 12 to 18 inches of ice and water in there and so the public ends up parking on sorrel which technically people shouldn't be parking on the right away but ends up happening as overflow because JAG employees are parking in that, um, just on the north side of Sorrel, right by the fence there. So I, don't, I wouldn't say that there's conflict, but we definitely see a need for clearing out some of those alders, like Tony just mentioned, you know, adding some fill so that there's not drainage issues there, and then just doubling the public parking on the south side of Sorrel there so that people can recreate at the beach more easily um it's tricky like i have young kids it's kind of tricky you got to pick them up and like shuttle them across the little lake and it's you know if i was in a wheelchair i don't even know how i would get down to the beach so we definitely need to improve the access and that's something we've been talking about quite a bit and is going to happen so well i i, I didn't I mean to suggest conflict but it's uh, some sort of an actual physical conflict. There's so tension there because there's well, a, a there's a trying need to use the same place yeah. as a conflict. There's a need for more parking. More um, yeah, it seems that the city has uh, five acres divided by Sorrel Road. You know, one point seven seven on one side and three point four on the other. It should be room to provide you know additional parking. Yep. And 
you know, maybe even a public access easement. I don't know if you actually would need that, though. I assume that Sorrel's platted and... Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any pull with the flood board? Some, <laughs> of, some, of, some of that may have some issues. Board Member Baquette? Um, is there... Does JAG have enough land to park their own oh, people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do we encourage them to get their cars onto their own leased land? Well, I, to be frank, I, I think w what PNZ talked about last night and just talking to community development and talking to Norm about it is the solution really is just increasing that parking kind of in that, I guess if you look at your map on page 76, just to the right of the word city, down there, kind of, you can see some cars parked, mm -hmm. and over to the right, there's a whole bunch of alders. And when the harbor clears that out and you know adds more material, that that'll solve the issue. It'll so. it'll double the parking lot is the plan, and just above where that access point is is also Jag's access point to their yard. So if people are want to park as close to the beach as possible, and if they're not cognizant, being cognizant of where yeah, their fence line is too and blocking their... But so their let's say the city makes more parking, that just gives JAG more parking oh. not on their property. And no. then now the city, then the other people still don't have a place to park. The tricky thing about that is that, it, and I, I think the solution is more parking. The tricky thing is we do provide public parking, I mean, you look right across the street and there's employees that work in this area that are using that public parking. Um, and so the question is, you know, is, is that public parking also to be made available to JAG employees? And I think PNZ's view, community development's view, the harbor's view is really just the solution is we need to increase parking capacity in that whole 4th of July beach area. And as close as possible, to where recreational users are going to want to access the beach. Well, that little foot shape um, between the actual access to the beach and the little partial access down the way, that was all cleared. You could find quite a bit of parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it would be, by its nature, pretty much for beach traffic. Yeah, it's, I'm sure Chris has been over there a bunch. It's uh, some of that, the easiest, I think, solution is just to cut off that little piece, double the parking. If we need more, then extend it down. A lot of that gets kind of marshy in there as well. You know, we don't want to create too much work either. It's, that's the quick solution, I think, is what we identified. So what I'm hearing is... There's there's a problem that everybody's working to solve. I think that's uh, I think that's admirable. I think we certainly need to uh, provide public access access to public property. At the same time, help our businesses. We all need to, uh, and want our businesses to grow and be profitable or well successful. <laughs> I don't think the profits is a public necessarily, but. Uh, that sounds great to me. That there's there is an option, you know. As, as the manager pointed out, there nice flat land there that could be opened up. And as far as parking, you know, somebody drives a huge uh, mud bogger and it uses three parking spaces. And, you know, there's always going to be abuse. There's always going to be somebody else abusing it. Okay. What other things we got? The, 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 You know, this is our this is our golden our golden goose over there, and, and, it, and it's the fact that it's full it was a problem we envisioned. Uh, we need to make sure that we keep opportunity for it to keep growing in a smart way. Sounds like planning and zoning's on top of it. Council's aware of it. Our two cents are in. Okay. Okay. Next. Agenda item. Uh, we don't have much time, 
but this is a weighty one, and this is the utility infrastructure. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, where's the item about? Why is the sewer plant in here? Where's that? It's not really on the agenda. Well, it's all, it fills the packet, so. I know. Mm -hmm. So, with it not being on the agenda, uh, I think I would uh, suggest under new business that we do have a brief discussion about it. Um, well, is that can, so can we do that? Well, you can say anything you like during your. Uh, administration comments Correct. at the end if you want to move on through the agenda, you know, citizen comments and then board and administration. I would prefer to have a board discussion if we can, so enter that somehow. And this is on something that wasn't published on the agenda? Yes. But it is in the packet? Yes, which is a little confusing. Yeah. You should um, have noticed that, I think. Administration, can you speak to that? This is what we're talking about, is the, the low point wastewater facility? So I I guess I was a little confused when, and I probably should have spoken up and asked, but I, I guess I, I was confused when the board changed the agenda from it being a discussion item to make it a presentation. We were told that the utility person was here to make a presentation. Okay. And so that's why, because okay. presentations usually are in a different place in the agenda, and then right. they also relieve the person who's here to make the presentation. I guess just in hindsight, we should have left the discuss utility infrastructure as a discussion item and had, well, had provided the presentation. And, and we may have, actually. We, we opened a presentation item in the name of the utility sure. and allowed the electrical department to, to speak and present on that. So this would fall under the exact same topic that's in the agenda, is that what you're saying? Correct. I would say you could talk about it then. <laughs> <laughs> Just a part of it was split into a presentation? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I well, I'm going to put the clerk on the spot. And from, as a chair, I'm going to say that it's still a new business item Okay. that we can discuss. That's good. And uh, you're welcome to rule me out of order. And don't be afraid to, uh, future Mr. Clerk. <laughs> uh, proceed, Chair Joppa. Brenda <laughs> <laughs> had a heavy hammer. <laughs> so uh, we, have, uh, we have batted around discussion about the low point uh, wastewater plant a number of times. Uh, we have asked the utility department to bring reports to us uh, of the status. Uh, and we know that there are some improvements planned. Um, and I think we want to make sure that those improvements actually meet the, the, the needs and the goals. Uh, so there is a report in front of us. Uh, and I'll ask the board to make any comments on that report. Board member okay. Um, thank you. This, the, I appreciate what's in the packet, although it isn't anything of what I was uh, initially looking for. What I had noticed was in 2021, we had R&M come and do an assessment of the lagoon. And they had, I want to say, roughly a seven-point list of things that needed to happen. Some of those things happened, and then in subsequent council packets, the report was there, and there were notations under the other things that hadn't gotten done. And they pretty much ended up reading, uh, we're waiting for the rain to stop, we're waiting for the rain to stop, because last summer, after the landslide, which certainly interfered with any work at the lagoon, that's understandable, and then it rained a lot, and that interfered. But what ended up happening is that status report, the last time it was in a council packet, it still said, waiting for rain, waiting for rain, 
And that, and then it just has disappeared now from the packet. So that's what I was asking for was an update in response to the recommendations R and M had given. Where do we stand now? Right. Um, there is a, uh, some information in here about the lagoon and the lagoon freezing over, and 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 that's all fine. What I'll say to that is that for 20 some odd years. During, especially there was one winter when it was 16 below for three weeks, like February of 99, I believe it was. Um, the lagoon never froze in the winter time. Never, ever, ever for the first 20 some years. Then we run into the problem where it went anaerobic and pretty much it's never really worked correctly since. So I appreciate the information that, hey, lagoons freeze over and all of that. But um, when you have a whole population of people who've lived there for 30, 40 years and they have an experience with the lagoon and the lagoon isn't behaving the way it used to behave and it's stinking in the wintertime, which is ridiculous because there's hardly anybody using the infrastructure, um, it it brings up concerns. And I don't, I mean, the fact that there's pieces of paper in here that say lagoons can freeze over, that doesn't change our historical information. It's almost as if we're being told our experience is not real. And I think that that's a problem. Okay. Oh. Carl? Well, I wasn't aware of uh, the um, information that Linda provided about the first 20 years that they're not freezing over. So something obviously changed. The, is, the, does the administration or the public works know what changed? I can't speak to that. I'll have to. I'll have to get back to you on it. Um, regarding the report, I'll grab that report and put it in the next pack ad packet. Seems like we're almost out of time. I, I, I would ask uh, to, to revisit this briefly with the Public Works Director when he's available. If we can get him to uh, just to attend uh, an available meeting, schedule something with him. Uh, and, and if that r &M report is available to us in the interim, um, this has been an ongoing discussion. I, I don't know what the ultimate resolution is, but uh, the Lauren Lehman reports from 2017 uh, there's a little bit of update from 2021. Let, let's let's get current. That may include the two million dollar sludge removal project as well. Okay, without objection, we'll move to closing comments. Um, informational item: citizen comments. Oh, yeah. Item nine: citizen comments. You don't lose it. You say the limit. I guess maybe I should introduce myself. I have been in Sewer now for about 15 years and had a sailboat here forever. Um, lived in Nome for a number of years and served on the council and the utility board. And mainly my career has been in energy efficiency and building science. And done a lot of research on building efficiencies and energy use. And my last eight years when I moved to Sewer was heat pumps make sense. The economics are there. We have reasonable electric rates and high oil rates and so I've been pursuing that as kind of my retirement project for the last eight years and I have an incredible amount of data that we've collected here locally and a lot of information from the state and federal research programs and I guess I'm here just to offer some of this information to those who are interested. Um, happy to do a little presentation. We can do the fluffy little stuff or we can get into the, the meat and potatoes of what doesn't work very well and what we can do to make things work better and again just to continue my pursuit of promoting heat pumps. So and if anyone's got any questions or suggestions, I'm more than happy to be here and give you my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. <coughs> okay. Uh, administration comments? 
Um, to Mr. Kaluza's point, it was interesting. I had a friend, his name is John Howard. He owns Northern Refrigeration in Juneau. Um, prior to that, he operated a HVAC company in Eagle River. I had coffee with him a couple well, a couple months ago. And um, I said, John, what are you doing in Seward? And he said, well, I had, I think, around a dozen people in South Central Alaska offer to pay me to come up to install heat pumps. And I think he, he uses Mitsubishi units, and he was telling me, you know, even when, even at the height of COVID, he was still able to get some of those units. And um, there is tremendous demand out there. I think it's, you know, obviously just I've got to find ways to, to, to build local capacity in the trades as well. That might be something that PACAB could think about and talk about in the future, too. But um, it was funny to have a friend fly all the way up here from Juno to install heat pumps because folks couldn't find, you know, capacity locally. I was a little, something that kind of blew my mind a little bit. It was good to see an old friend and have coffee with him and talk about heat pumps because I didn't know a lot about it. But, um, and I guess the only other thing is just for the public, um, you know, the vote is coming up on May 2nd pretty quickly. HEA's got a ton of information out there. They're doing um, a variety of presentations and putting out material. So just for the voters, please take advantage of those opportunities to learn more. Um, it's not a, a vote that should be taken lightly. It's, I would say it's, it's a fair statement to say it's probably the most consequential thing that's gonna happen in Seward in a long, long time. And um, yeah, please take the time to, to talk to the folks from HEA because they're happy to answer your questions. And as always, thanks to the board for a really good meeting. Okay. We'll go ahead and take comments from the board. We'll start with uh, Dwayne. Um, thank you. Uh, I didn't want to extend the meeting too much longer, but I will uh, have to uh, uh, back up a little bit um, regarding uh, vessel traffic when I was reporting. I do anticipate, um, I have tentative scheduling anyway for uh, Navy vessels in late April and early May without disclosing any, without identifying ships. Um, <laughs> Somewhere in the Pacific, there'll be an exercise. It's actually out in the Gulf, and then have, we'll we'll see I, about uh, about dockings. And I, I guess that's what I can say about it for now. Good for you. Thank you. Board Member Walker. Well, just good to see everybody. Go on. Board Member Smith. Thanks. Um, in, in response to uh, Mr. Clues's, um comment about building um, design and quality, I think uh, one of the things that uh, government is kind of held to as the uh, lowest cost and that's not always the same as um, best value right so uh, building things I, I see this constantly in, in residential construction too because the realtors are concerned about the selling price and, and so we're it's almost all new construction is not as good as it could be and um, unless you're doing a custom one-off for yourself it doesn't seem like anybody's interested in that and I, um, I remember it was a, a, a two or three years ago I, I discussed on this um, with this board about the, the, maybe the city should be putting solar panels on every new building they build, right? Um, like take the lead, um, show show what good building design can do because I, I feel like it's um it's it's across all sectors. It's not just the city, but I, I fully expect that um, as things go, we'll be given the same building that you would you would have built 40 years ago with an oil boiler, like you would have you know in, in the 50s or something, and and um, without any advancement. But I do. I would like to uh, you know, comment that the, the harbor um, has shown a lot of initiative with that, with the heat pumps um, in, in, uh, in buildings where those are available. And um, I don't know if it's a, could I ask a question of administration? I think so. Uh, what what is the new uh, animal shelter heated by? Um, I think I, I knew at one point, but I've forgotten. It's got a heat pump. Heat pump. Two. Pass, pass, pass two. two yeah. heat pump. Excellent. Thank you. Pass that. I can't really comment. <laughs> Backup boilers are good, thanks. Question for the court clerk, uh, can the chair extend the meeting for 10 minutes? Uh, that's fine with me. Okay, we'll extend the meeting for 10 minutes. I don't think we'll need it all. Uh, board member Hughes. Well, um, you all have a handout for me, and uh, hmm. I wanted to make public, uh, put it on the public record that uh, effective, uh, I don't know if it's the end of July or the 1st of July, I will not be renewing my participation in the Port Cap Board. Uh, it's been, I've loved it. I enjoyed it every minute of it, the challenge and what we could do for our community, especially this community. So I do have a question for, and thank you all. Thank you all for the type of service you have provided. 
and I'm proud of all of them. I have a question for Mr. Calusa. I need to get a business card or a phone number. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, no business cards anymore. I'm retired. retired. Uh, phone number 907 Three six zero six three three seven. Six three three seven. Okay. And text me if you want. All right. Pete at gmail.com. Okay, the vice chair. Look. Okay. Do I need to do Fred? What? I got Fred. Did you do? Fred? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm going okay. in order. All right. Of seniority. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. I'll try and be quick. Um, in the Harbor Report, it said uh, closed on Sundays till spring. What, what's co what constitutes spring? Great question. Um, right now, <laughs> we that just came up. Um, we will be full staff, or seven days a week, have the office open seven days a week. Um, on May 7th, I believe okay. we start. Yeah. Okay. I can look at it. But that first week of May. All right. Perfect. Carl, thank you for your service, and I appreciate you giving us a heads up. I wonder if the clerk can start advertising a second seat. I know we're advertising an open seat right now. Can you advertise a second seat open come July so we can get word out that we are going to have another open seat? Yeah, I think we could start adding that to the calendar. Okay. I'll, I'll ask the city clerk when she gets back. Okay, thank you. Um, Phil, if you have a list of uh, ideas about the building, it, it's hard. I, I, under, I appreciate what you're saying, and I agree that we want to build the best building we can, but it's hard to know. We don't have the time to be digging in at that level, but if you've looked at it and you've got a list of, hey, we should consider doing this. It might be a little extra more. You know, we did that with the um, with the animal shelter because originally the sidewalks were not going to be Wurzboat or heated, and it cost it out. It made sense to do it. So give us a list. I mean, right now it's just this thirty percent. Here's sort of the structure, zero details. Right. So right. It's just talking and. Benjamin's comment about cost, I mean, if we use the term life cycle cost as being the lowest mm -hmm. cost, that solves everything. Now the engineers get to look at the next 50 years instead of one year. And if, if we could at least be promoting those concepts instead of square, what, what can I get the most square footage? Right. So just a little more guidance, I think, for us well, so that we can... Do, but it's, it's a battle. Yeah. Without yeah. support from groups like you, I could beat my head all day long and get nowhere, which I've done for 40 years. Keep doing it. <laughs> um, so uh, just for the public uh, to know, tomorrow at noon, the Chamber of Commerce is having uh, a presentation from HEA at their membership meeting. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to see one of their presentations, that would be at another time. Norm, I hope you feel better. I'm sorry you're not here. And then the last thing I want to just mention, uh, for those of us that have run the March numbers, it wasn't the best March ever. In fact, it was one of the worst Marches ever. So um, what? Uh, rev in the hospitality industry and in retail. Retail and, and hospitality didn't have the best March. And some of that we can blame on the weather, but um, April's not looking all that wonderful either at the moment. So. Okay. Uh, well, I'll start with thanking Board Member Hughes, Carl. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve with you, and I, I'm distressed, uh, disappointed, but understanding uh, of the things that uh, are in life beyond this. And I hope that you continue to monitor city activity and participate as best you can. Uh, and I know you will. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Calusa for coming in again. And you, you have tremendous state to it. Uh, you've, you've spoke before this board before. I think we have had some. Uh, benefit from that. Uh, I, I would just like to say, uh, in a point of history, 
I just recently bought a building that was built in 1976 in Seattle. And in it, there's an air conditioner that was built by General Electric that had a heat pump function to it in 1976. And they no longer make that unit. And they didn't continue the development of it. Where would we be if they had? Uh, but heat pumps are a no-brainer. Return of investment, which again, as Board Member Smith mentioned, is, is it's sometimes difficult for people to, to fund up front, but it's something that every program, including Homer Electric's programs, uh, even though it may not be perfect, they, they do have some incentive programs that the City of, of Seward could have picked up on and hasn't, including uh, rebates, investment programs, uh, and other types of things. So I'm, I'm not advocating that it's the best deal out there that Homer's got, but I think everybody should look at what they've got and vote uh, on May 2nd. Whatever your preference is, uh, you need to speak up. It's a, it's a significant issue. This, this, uh, this meeting today, I really appreciate everybody's participation in it. I, I hope that I've served uh, uh, your, your needs in, in administering or uh, fun, uh, chairing this. Um, up until I read Carl's letter, I was about to throw in myself. Uh, I've been on this board a long time, and I have some significant challenges in my schedule. But I also think the city of Seward is at a, at a, 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 a tremendously important phase of their life cycle. We have a almost revolving chair in our manager role. We're losing some vital uh, uh, people who have contributed, our clerk, we don't have a finance director. Uh, there, there are a lot of things in, in flux right now. And the greatest thing I think we need is some stability. And uh, even though I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, I think I'm, I'm pretty stable. So I'll stay the course, and I would hope that everybody else does. Uh, bring whatever you can to it and, and, uh, and stand up for the city of Seward wherever you can. It's still a great, great opportunity we have here with all the problems. Parking problems, that's the greatest thing you could ever hope for, <laughs> is parking problems. Okay, other than that, uh, we'll close the meeting at uh, 12.07.